Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. That's me singing. Yes, hi everybody. How are you? This is the ramble. We go from now until, uh, uh, well, we go from now until, uh, 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 when, when do we, uh, uh, midnight Eastern time. There we go. Okay. Almost forgot when we get off. I'm glad I remember when we get off so that I'll remember to get off. Anyway. We are going to talk to an old friend of ours we love getting together with every now and then, talk about things politics and things comedy. Ladies and gentlemen, for a roundup of the year, <laughs> that's pretty much what this is. Here, ladies and gentlemen, once again, Will fucking Durst. Hey, Alex fucking better. Thank you, buddy. Yeah, last time we saw uh, you was in New York City. Was. Yeah. Missed the place. What's it like? Is it cold? Uh, it's cold, yeah, and I've got a scratchy throat I've had for like a week because oh, of the weather. Didn't post nasal drip and crap like that, you know? Yeah, so, yeah. So I decided instead of coffee today, I'm going to do tea. Oh, very, very civilized. Mm hmm. Very civilized. I can now talk in a British accent. There you go. And do, yeah, yeah. And do that. I don't do tea. Yeah. Mm. So how uh, how how you been? Yeah, you did you go you go away on vacation or something? <laughs> We went to Hawaii. I caught a cold in Hawaii, which is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Um, we did that for a week, and yeah. now we're back home preparing for the big fat year-end kiss-off comedy show. Yeah. The 26th annual. Uh, start December 26th and January 6th. And uh, doing a lot of press, mostly, for that. Yeah. Yeah, good. Good. Yeah. It's your year, and uh, it's uh, the uh, make make uh, Durst a final buck for the year tour. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And uh, uh, this year, you know, because some years, uh, not a lot of stuff uh, happened in terms of uh, of uh, comedic fodder. But this year, uh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. year, yeah, yeah, yeah. You you gotta love Trump. He's been great for you has uh great and horrible because nothing lasts you yeah. know i mean uh, it's so ephemeral it he's so perishable you know what he says one day doesn't uh, not applicable the next day inoperable the third day and and then he's just uh horrible the fourth day yeah but here's the thing i was starting a while back i interviewed rob schneider and i said do you do any any comedy about about trump and he says, no, I don't. And he said, why? And he says, too easy. He said, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. You I know. disagree. Yeah, I would disagree, too. Totally disagree. I think it's harder. I think that's, uh, <laughs> uh, that I, uh, what, what would he, uh, he, he agrees with him. He's a right-wing comic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. What, what does that mean? To, no. Well, no. but I was just throwing that Thank out there. You know, yeah. I mean, it can it can somebody like a Trump be too easy, and that all it winds up being is bullying. <laughs> not, not, if, not if you find a fresh take on it. Yeah. And what I've learned is to ignore the specifics and concentrate on the patterns. I'll tell you who was too easy. Monica Lewinsky, 1990, oh, yeah, 20 yeah. years ago. Yeah. The first time we discovered the shape of the leader of the leader of the free world. Yeah. He, uh, my, every comic, every two-bit hack in America took their dick jokes and made them presidential dick jokes. And we're suddenly, you know, uh, political comics. I remember people saying, well, what kind of comedy do you do? I do political comedy. Oh, Monica Lewinsky. And that was their response. Yeah. And they thought, you know, I mean, everybody, uh, comics... Comics on open mic were turning into pre you know political. Cool. Comics. Now, were you? Did you bash Monica Lewinsky? I didn't bash Monica Lewinsky. I, I did a joke about uh, I never had sexual relations with that woman. He was pointing at Helen Thomas. He meant that yeah. one. <laughs> 
Thomas. Now is. nobody remembers. Nobody Helen remembers Thomas. who Helen yeah. Thomas is. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, that shows how old we're getting. You know, today's my 79th birthday. Oh, happy birthday, buddy! Uh, fuck you. <laughs> next year, oh Jesus! Next year, uh, the big eight. Oh my God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you're still look at it. you're still wandering around. You gotta see Mary Poppins. You gotta see Mary Poppins because Dick Van Dyke shows up uh, near the end, and he's ninety three, right? Yeah, and he's dancing, and I'm sure they had oxygen, you know, before the ten second takes. <laughs> they strung them together, but he looks great. He look he's ninety three. He's still working. How do you know it's not CGI? Uh, I looked. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, um, um, some people got the genes, you know? Uh, well, some people look old at 65. I don't know. Other- I've got a scratchy throat. I've had it for like about a week, two weeks because of the weather, right? Uh, <coughs> and, and a little bit of a cough, and I'm thinking throat cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. That happens to Larry Bubbles Brown. That happened to him at 44. Yeah, you know? but you say to yourself, see, you say to yourself at my age, w- when you wake up in the morning, I got a sore throat. What's going to get me? Is this the one that's going to get me? You know, know. Is it the sore throat and it turns into throat cancer and before I know it, I'm dead? You know, and I don't take the idea of death very well. It's just not in my, in my genetic makeup. I have always had a great fear of death ever since I was a child. I was worried when I was a child about dying someday. And now someday is here. Now, that's a lot closer than was it when you were a kid, yeah? Yeah. Have you seen Network? No. The play? No. You went to see it, right? I, I went to see it, and uh, they, they took out a line for the movie that was one of my favorite lines of all times in a movie. And it's when um, when the William Holden character is talking to his wife and he explains his mor- you know, the feeling of mortality weighing down upon him. Mm-hmm. And he says, uh, I look, and I can't remember the exact quote, but it, it, it talked about aging and it talked about a man aging mm-hmm. and his whole sense of virility, you know, being on the line here mm-hmm. and maybe for... You know, by having an affair with the Faye Dunaway character, maybe he was forestalling that that dark cloud for one day, and it was it was just the greatest line, and I wish I could look it up, but yeah, different for guys. Yeah, different for Broadway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, but it is it is uh, yeah yeah. Uh, my wife has no fear about death. She looks forward to it. She says, uh, it, it, it's, there's too much going on that's bothering me. She says, uh, another five years, uh, enough time for me to uh, enjoy this country before Trump has totally ruined it, and then I'm gone. And I go, I'm not going anywhere. Goodbye. See you later. You know, not following into that great abyss. I'm sorry. You no, know? no. Hang out with my fingertips. I'm yeah. growing my fingernails extra long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the old soy saying goes, I don't buy uh, unripe bananas. You know, it's just never, you never know. But, you know, you never, the thing I've never been able to come to uh, grips with is you never did know. You know, how many people we know? Like, hey, look at Bill Hicks, dead at 32. Was he you, only 32? He's only 32. Dude. Right, you know, uh, a lot of people that you hear about that, that die young, or they're younger than you, and they die, and you go, "What the fuck's that about?" You know. Uh, so, the fact is, you've been, you've been, the Grim Reaper's been chasing you all your life. You know, how many babies does it take at birth? You know, I mean, you never know. You never know. I guess that's the great unknown that we have in our life. We just don't know when it's going to happen or why it's going to happen. Don't. And, th- and that's what we're talking about on my 79th birthday is death. And then there's the great known, which is no one here gets out alive. Yes, that's right. <clears throat> it, my dad was born on the exact same day as Merv Griffin. Oh, really? Exact same day, same month, same year. Wow. And my and July sixth, nineteen twenty six, I think. So, uh, 
he he kind of followed him throughout his career. You know, just a side what Long's glance. You know, just keeping track of what he was doing. My dad was not into popular culture at all, but he did keep track of of Merv Griffin, and he knew about the feud with Donald Trump. You know, over Atlantic City casinos, and 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 he died. Merv Griffin died about six years earlier than my dad did. And I remember uh, my dad sitting me down and saying, now, he was a billionaire, right? Yeah, yeah. And he owned all these uh, hospi- I, all these casinos and hotels, and, right. and he created uh, Jeopardy and Wheel of Fortune, and he had the money rolling in, yeah? Well, how much do you think he would give up to trade places with me today? Because I'm vertical, and he's a horizontal. And I, and I, you know, that made me think, you know, just, just for what, another couple of years, would you give up all your wealth for another couple of years? I bet you would. I think so. Yeah. 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 Uh, but you don't know that cause you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> it's a mood argument. <laughs> it's a mood argument. You're dead. So, you know, who's going to say what you, well, you you can live another six <coughs> years if you'll just give up all your money. Well, I'm not dead yet, so I mean, what kind of argument is that? You know, that's some dense shit, Chuck. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so as we look at this uh, end of the year, of course, we were discussing Trump and the fact that you know he's great, been great fodder for you. I remember, you know, two years ago when I think we started doing all this and I said, do you, once the election is over, do you have a job? And you said, no, I'm, I'm unemployed. You didn't realize what a windfall you had ahead of you. No, because usually the year after the quadrennial, the presidential election, people are so sick and tired of politics that nobody wants to hear the political jokes. Yeah. But this time, you know, the, the commie pinko yellow red bastard community got together and we needed to support each other right. and, and reinforce the fact that we were not crazy, that this shit was surreal that was going on. And so I had a, I had a, and now, now people are just sick and tired of hearing about Trump again. Yeah. So I might, I might spend a year going back to the boomer show. The boomer show. Uh, yeah, I do a show about being a baby boomer. And then in 2020, I think people will be, uh, you know, because of the election. Yeah, I was a war baby. Yeah, you weren't a boomer. Yeah. You were born in 79, 13, four, uh, 39? That is correct, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but anyway, oh, I'm... Uh, <clears throat> I've had How's this. that key working out for you? It's not helping. It's not helping. Uh, anyway, so. Uh, it, but it, it, it's been quite a year in that respect. I think almost exhausting, and I'll tell you why. This is a guy who likes to monopolize the news. You know, we didn't get this kind of monopolizing of the news about Obama. You could go several weeks without talking about Obama or something Obama did, you know. Because what he was, he just did his job and he did it in a methodical, rather paced manner. This well, guy, this guy, is, right. this guy wakes up in the morning and says, how can I get people to talk about me? And it's exhausting. Not to mention boring. Yeah, Obama was like a professor, you know, he was sh- uh, not shy, but he was, he kind of re- was retiring, he always looked good, he's. He spoke in a measured, low-key way. Yeah. Totally different. Yeah. Totally different. But, but this guy wakes up in the morning saying, how can I monopolize the news? I mean, I tur- turn on MSNBC, which I'm getting pissed at MSNBC. I can't stand them any longer. Because for a solid hour, it's Trump. I'm sorry, there's other news going on. There's other stuff to talk about. But no, it's Trump, 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 Trump. And Trump bash, Trump bash, Trump bash, Trump bash. And while I, nobody loves Trump bashing more than I do, you don't need to suck my dick while you're doing a newscast. You get what I'm saying? 
Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's not throw blanket denials over uh, possibly uh, very recreational all, activities. All right, but if it were somebody else but MSNBC d sucking my dick, okay? Katie Turr. Huh? Katie Turr. Katie Turr? Yeah. Well, they got some great names over there. Katie Turr probably went into the business because of all the silly names they called her in high school. You hey, know what happened? Hey, hey, turd. Hey, turd. Hey, hey, turd. What are you doing, turd? How you doing, turd? And the other one over there is Casey Hunt, who I always call Hasey. <laughs> and then there's the Chris, what's her name in the morning? Morning for me, afternoon for you. Morning for you, Chris? Chris. I on, uh, I, I'm on MSNBC. Mm -hmm. I got it on right now. Well, you don't have to, you know, it, well, there there we go. Oh, there we finally see her. Oh, you, you're in, that's your kitchen. Yeah. I, I didn't know you were in a one-bedroom, one, a studio apartment. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's why Debbie and I live like we're in college. <laughs> we are. We're still in college. Yeah. I'm a 66-year-old college uh, student. Yeah. Uh, but... You know, Chris Jansen. Chris Jansen. Chris Jansen. Yeah. Oh, is is that you? Yeah, I got a call. Yeah. And I just. Do you know what I have to do? I have to turn off all my stuff because I have like a iPad and I have a watch. And, and they're all connected. And they're all connected, and they'll all go off at the same time. Hold on a second. Let me turn off my bell. There we go. My watch. Okay, so I have to leave all my phones and iPads in the other room when I'm doing something like this. And unfortunately, I left my watch on, so I just wanted to turn that off. Because yeah. today's my birthday, and yeah, people are going to call. You know what I hate about, I'll tell you what I hate about birthdays most of all is Facebook. <coughs> because everybody you're friends with gets a notification that it's your birthday. And so you get all these birthday wishes from people you never heard of in your life, especially me. I've got like 5,000 followers. And, uh, well, it's because of the radio thing and all of that, you know, Sirius XM. People just, you know, became friends uh, or friends. Well, how we've cheapened that term. Uh, but then Mark Zuckerberg says you can only have 5,000 friends. Yeah, you can only have 5,000 friends, right? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, so what happened is is that, that they then all get a message saying it's Alex's birthday, wish him a happy birthday. So they just, all they have to do is click. So now I've got today so far 200 <laughs> birthday wishes, you know. So a couple of them from people I wanted to hear from, you know. But usually they do it by my messenger, like Penn Gillette did it but via messenger, you know. So hey. do you go through and like every one of them? No. No, I say occasionally when I see somebody I haven't talked to in years, I put a little thanks or gee, yeah. long time, no see. Like one of the ones I got today was May Pang. Do you know the name? Remember the name May yes. Pang? Yes. Yes. Ah, you do remember. Why do, we, why do I remember that? Don't. She conspiracist? No. no, that was the other May. No. May Pang. Was she uh, involved in rock and roll? Yes. Okay. Uh, that's as far as I can go. Uh, let me let me throw out a name, Yoko Ono. Oh, and they were best friends. Well, she was Yoko's assistant. Oh, okay. But then John went out to the West Coast because oh. he and Yoko weren't hey, getting along. He hooked up with May Pang. He hooked up with May oh, Pang. God, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yellow fever. Well, I've known May over the years. I knew her when she was Yoko Ono's assistant. Okay. And then I got to know her afterwards because she came through town. She wrote a book or something. And, and we just always have had, you know, about every 10 years I hear from May Pang. Uh, and today she said, happy birthday, Alex. So that one, I wrote back, you know, great to hear from you. Am I how the years have flown? You know? That's pretty cool. Yeah. So, you know, the two most famous people that sent me a birthday greeting were... Pendulette and May Pang. <laughs> yes, Pendulette and May Pang, yeah. Oh, bad. So, anyway, but uh, um, you, you know what you do? I'll tell you, here's a little hint. This is, I don't know if, if Trump does this. 
But years ago, a friend of mine started an organization for the legalization of marijuana. This was this, uh, well, back, normal was the was the organization, uh, and uh, so uh, he said, uh, "Gee, I would like to. I'd love to get some kind of letter from the president of the United States." I said, "It's very simple. You simply send him a letter inviting him to some event you're having, like you're, you know, and name the group something that doesn't have to do with marijuana." Okay. So he named his group something that didn't have anything to do with marijuana. Something like Make America Great Again, something like that. And he sends Nixon a letter inviting him to the party. And uh, uh, Nixon writes back a letter, sorry I can't attend, but we wish you all the success with your fine organization. And they went and ran around with this letter from Nixon saying that he, you know. Well, the way I got the idea was from Abby Hoffman who when his son, uh, America, now known as Eric, was born, uh, he sent a letter to Nixon at the time saying, Dear President Nixon, uh, I just want to inform you of the birth of our child. Or, you know, or he sent a birth announcement or something. And the president sent him a letter saying, Congratulations <laughs> on the birth of your child. May he, be May he turn out to be as fine as his father. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, but he didn't know it was Abby Hoffman. He didn't. Nice he, the, form letter, the, yeah. It was a form letter, you know. Some kind of a machine signed it. You know. So I said, that's, that's the way you get the president to acknowledge your left-wing group. <laughs> you know. So you might try to send Trump something, you know. That would, that would Saying we're them. holding a comedy show in your honor. Would you like to come? <laughs> now, did he say something? I heard this on the as a teaser on a radio show that Trump said he wanted to regulate comedians. Did you hear this? No. I gotta look it up. Yeah, I mean, he he might have said it offhand. Yeah, yeah. You know, he might have said he's tired of all these comedians making fun of him, you know, because you know he has no sense of humor about himself. None, none. I mean, the none. only reason he ran for, you know, if I could go back, it was, this was like back to the future, and I could go back in time in my DeLorean and do anything, I would go to the correspondence dinner, the, the uh, White House correspondence dinner, and tell Trump, do not mention, I tell Obama, do not mention Trump. Don't mention Trump. Because if he hadn't mentioned Trump there, Trump might have never run for president. Well, it, yeah, people say it was uh, it was Obama or it was Seth Meyers. Because really? Seth Meyers was especially brutal. Oh, really? But, yeah. But uh, then uh, Obama was not uh, kind either. So it was a cross between the two. Isn't that amazing? I mean, that you, you, you don't have a sense. Of, I mean, Obama had a tip terrific sense of humor oh, yeah. himself. In fact, smart. in fact, every time smart. I ever saw him a do humor, they can understand irony. Dumb people don't have senses of humor. They think someone falling down and hitting their head on the sidewalk is funny. Yeah. But the thing is that um uh, uh that uh, uh, Trump um uh, uh was never had a great sense of humor, but the thing about Obama was Anytime you saw him on something where he was required to do comedy, his timing was impeccable. Well, he had also rehearsed it, you know. Mm -hmm. He and Clinton would rehearse it. Bush, not so much. Really? But, but yeah, at, those, yeah. at those correspondence dinners, he was funny. Yeah. Yeah, so was Clint. But, but you know, you can somebody can write the material for you. That doesn't mean you can do it. You know, that you can make it pay off, as you know. I mean, everything in comedy is timing. And Obama had amazing timing. And Michelle Wolf, was, was she this year? I think she I was think this so. year. Yeah. And yeah. She was, uh, now next year they're going to have a non-comedian. Because she pissed so well, many What are they going to do, off. get Amy Schumer? Uh, that was, <laughs> no. Oh, 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 oh. oh. <laughs> I think she's funny. Uh, uh, yeah. Look at me, I'm fat. I have a period. Yeah, <laughs> it's a you know, yeah. which is a little different. Yeah, was that you or me? 
That was me. I just got dinged by a radio station. Oh, is your is your is your is your egg ready? Uh, what do you mean you got dinged by a radio station? Uh, they want to do an, uh, it was my uh, little green uh, cartoon bubble, the message thing. Yeah. Wants to know if I want to do uh, an interview on Friday. Oh, okay. So you're going to do it. Of course you're going to do it. Of course you're going to do it. Hell, if you'll do this little piece of shit with me, you'll do a radio station. Well, I, I try to save it up all year long. I don't make a lot of yeah. requests of radio t stations or TV stations. I try to, you know, blanket the market for the New Year's Eve yeah. show. Like, what radio station was this? That, this? Uh, that was KSRO in uh, San Ro San, uh, Santa Rosa. Santa Rosa. Yeah. yeah. Boy, uh, they've never changed their call letters, have they? Most stations have changed their call letters. That one always has remained the same. But it stands for Santa Rosa, so why why yeah, change yeah. it? You know. I always love that. Uh, the early uh, the early ones all meant something. WGN in Chicago. Yeah. Was by the Tribune and WGN stands for World's Greatest Newspaper. Oh really? I didn't know that. Uh yeah. Really? And our, our news channel in, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Uh, was WTMJ, which stood for the Milwaukee Journal. Oh, I thought it just, uh, I thought it would stood for like well, your jaw getting. <laughs> TMJ, TMJ. <laughs> I, I can't, I can't uh, commit fellatio. TMJ. Well, uh, I worked for KTIM in San Rafael, which stood which stands for Tim. No, this is Marin. This is Marin. Oh, yeah. was that an afterthought? Was that a no? Was that a, That's yeah, why they, I, I think that was aftermarket. No, it wasn't. Actually. No, it wasn't. They d created the station. It was in Marin, and they called it KTIM. This is Marin. It was owned by the Independent Journal. Oh. Oh. Okay. They call it, could have called it KTIJ, but they didn't. Yeah. They called it KTIM. But it might have been Independent Marin when it first started. We don't know. Well, no, but when it, it started, uh, I think, in 47 or sometime like that, and I know the guy that started it, and that was that was what they what they called it for. In San Francisco, you had yeah, a guy. Like, I like the origin of uh, call letters, you know? Yeah, well, he, here's, here's, an, interesting, oh, no here's an interesting one in San Francisco. Um, KCBS wasn't always KCBS. It was KQW. K K what? KQW. KQW. Yeah, now I don't know where they got the call letters from, but that was technically there's a fight, but they say that may have been the first radio station in the United States. KQW? Yeah, which then came became KCBS. How did they how did they decide that east of the Mississippi would be W's? I don't know. And west of the Mississippi would be K's. I have no idea. No. I have no idea. And, and Mexico is, uh, C, uh, is uh, what, 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 Mexico is X. And oh, Canada X. is C. Canada is C. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah a little, little radio yeah. history for yeah, you. The show is not just a, a celebration of Falderall. And of uh, birthdays. It's also educational. Well, also in San Francisco, uh, you don't remember the days when uh, KGO, uh, excuse me, when um, uh, um, KNBR was at one time KNBC until oh. they decided they wanted those call letters for their New York, uh, their uh, uh, Los Angeles television station. Right, right. KC, and, yeah. and before it was KNBC, it was KPO. Cable? And there were two stations in the same building, KPO and KGO. Ah. And KGO was, there was the blue and the red network. Right, right. And uh, when, when finally they had to separate and one became ABC and the other one stayed with NBC, they still remained in the same building. KPO and KGO were in the same building. Ah. And then KPO became, as I say, KNBC, and then it became KNBR. Very good. See, I Very know my radio that, history. Is that not amazing? Knowledge. So when radio you go in, when you go in to do your year end radio stuff at these stations, say, do you know your call letter used to be? You know, do you know the history of that? And you don't have to credit me with it. You can just I look. 
infinitely will, like the smartest ass in the world, which you are oh. anyway. So no, no, no. I mean, this you know when you consult the Del- Delphi, I mean, uh, it's nice. You got to let people know you were, you were you saw the oracle. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> well, the oracle is a little older than he was last year. Hey, you uh, know we've gone over time. Older than he was yesterday. Yeah, actually, and uh, hopefully I'll be older tomorrow than I am today. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much for being here all year long, Will, and we'll get together the first of the year and do this once again because I enjoy, I really enjoy this. You know. You have a happy birthday. Say hello to your lovely wife. I will, ladies and gentlemen, the lovely and attractive Will Dursey's doing his his. Year end Big, show. Uh, year end kiss off comedy show. So if you're in the Bay Area and a lot of our people are, wilders.com. World, go to wilders.com. You'll find out where it's going to be. There are a lot of different dates for that. Thank you very much, Will. Thank you, buddy. Celebrating four years of talk like you've never heard it before. This is Gap, the Great American Broadcast Network. Yeah, okay, all right, okay, all right. <laughs> oh, I do all those things fast. I, uh, I, 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 I'm, 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 uh, yeah. So anyway, uh, hello, welcome back. This is uh, Alex, and I thank Will Durst. He is uh, just uh, uh, a joy to deal with and to talk to and to uh, muddle through things with, and I, I, yeah, I think the world of him. And he's been very good to us by doing this show on a rather constant basis. Anyway, uh, I have opened the lines so that if you want to call this damn program, you can do so. If you don't know how to do it, you can use Skype. And if you don't know how to use Skype and you don't know how to, the whole process goes, go over to our GabNet page, GabNet.net, GabNet.net, okay? And over on the right-hand side of the page, whole tutorial on how to do it. Tells you how to get Skype, how to call on Skype. It's even got a little button. Believe it or not, there's a little button there that if you've got Skype turned on on your computer, then you just click that and it'll call the program. Simple? Okay. That's simple, and you should uh, you should uh, you should try it sometime if you haven't already. Uh, but we do have a lot of people, and uh, here here. Oh, what do you know? We haven't heard from this guy. We haven't heard from you in a couple of weeks. But I hear you were moving, right, Scott Boddicker? I have moved. You have moved. You're in the new house. Yeah, it's a little dark in this room, but hey, before we get started, you were talking about radio stations and W's and K's and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where do you think Iowa is? Is it east or west of the Mississippi? Uh, Iowa? Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, where is it? I think it's west of the Mississippi, isn't it? Yes. I, I can name you three radio stations in Iowa that start with a W. And they're on the west side of the Mississippi? Yes. Wow. Well, well okay. All right. Well, yeah, you go to Iowa all the time. Hello, by the way, to the lovely Stein family we have there tonight. I'm just dropping in to wish you a happy birthday, well, Alex. Well, uh, thank you. Uh, very nice of you. I appreciate it. Uh, you have a wonderful day. Uh, well, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a very mediocre day for me. I did absolutely oh. nothing. Nothing. <laughs> okay, well, that was going to be my question. Uh, by the way, happy birthday. W- what, did, what nothing did you do? Nothing. Uh, 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 nothing. Zero. Zilch. Yeah. We were going to yeah. go out and we were going to have dinner. Uh, right. And then I looked at the temperature. What, what were you going to do? Roll your wife down the uh, well, elevator well, shaft? Well, the temperature was uh, <laughs> under. Reason. It was in the 30s. And, oh. Yeah, and yeah. That, that was for starters. And then, of course, we had her with her indigency, yeah. uh, which she could have walked to the restaurant uh, because she's doing okay. She's picking up now. She's starting to. You know, she's she, getting to That's look like it's getting New Yorkers can it's order getting, everything. Getting in. to look like the telethon worked, okay? Well, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, it, it gets icy there. You can just push her and let her slide to <laughs> yeah, the restaurant. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, so uh, and I wasn't feeling too well either. So, you know, I've been having some kind of sore throat or something like that. I don't know. It's cancer, you know. But, <laughs> yeah. but uh, uh, hello there, Rob. How are you this evening? Good. How are you? Yeah, there he is. He's in the dark. Uh, 
He's yeah, the a, wife is downstairs watching TV where I normally uh, sit, so I figured I'd come up here. Oh, okay, all right. So, so, uh, um, but anyway, so I didn't, I didn't do anything today. I mean, it was kind of with her and her situation. We were going to go to this very nice restaurant that she had planned two months ago uh, that we like going to, but unfortunately. Uh, 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 she had this accident, and going there would have been kind of an impossibility for us. So yeah. we didn't do it. You know. Yeah, I, I, you must have been uh, having a quiet day because I, I wrote you and I said happy birthday, and you wrote me back thanks like w within a half a second. Well, <laughs> you know, what it, was, I'll tell you what it was. Here's what yeah. happens. Uh, well, you uh, sitting there with the thanks button. Well, <laughs> I, I should you should be able to opt out of something if you want to on Facebook, but they don't allow you to. And what you should be able to opt out of is allowing people to know when it's your birthday. Oh, you know, we know it was your birthday. Well, wait today. a minute, wait a minute, no, because. I've got 5,000 people who, who are uh, attached to my page. And each yeah. one of those 5,000 people get a message that says, it's Alex Bennett's birthday. Would you like to wish him a happy birthday? And all they have to do is just click the button to go click, right? So without even thinking about it, I got almost 500 birthday wishes, right? That's better than you do on the, on the, on the Ramble uh, postings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. But uh, what I'm saying is it, it you know, it then you got to then I got to go through all of them because there are some people there that I know and I just want to say thanks like I did with you although yours was a message. Um, well, yeah. Well, it was easy, you know, it was a, but, I sent you a picture and a happy birthday. Yeah, and I I wrote back thanks, you know. Yeah. What do you want? You want a blow job? What? <laughs> um, you, you know. know. Uh you can send money. <laughs> I could do that anyway. Yeah. So here, here's what I. So here, here's. Uh, so I, I then go through them and I go, oh, hey, look, so, so and so wished me happy birthday. I haven't talked to them in a while, so I write thanks. So give me a call. We should talk soon or something like that. You know. Um, and I got a few that I, you know, every now and then I get a few and I go, oh, they, how did they remember? Well, because they got the thing and they said, oh, it is Alex Bennett's birthday. They don't know how old I am, but you know, so. yeah. But it, it so it it. Uh, but I wish I could opt out of that because it's a lot of work going through five hundred. How, did, how well does it wishes. feel to have a birthday on the day that Penny Marshall died? Um, I don't think it will be remembered as that. No, no, uh, yeah. You know, uh, it's also the day it's Steven Spielberg's birthday today. Keith Did Richard, he die? Keith Richards is 75 today. He's been dead for a long time. Uh, I think this was Beethoven's birthday, if I'm not mistaken, if I remember correctly. I forgot yeah. to send him a note. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. Uh, um, and uh, let me see here. Who else's birthday is today? There are a couple other people. Yeah. yeah. So, so uh, I share my birthday with a couple of people. And uh, what the hell? You know, it's fine with me. But, you know, I got somebody who wrote me and said, you know, it's also Keith Richards' birthday, but he's only 75. And I, I'm a youngster. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and, and but you know what? You look better than he does. Well, anybody does. <laughs> That's true. Most people five days dead look better okay. than Keith Richards. <laughs> yeah. You know. uh, so, uh, you know, I wonder how Keith Richards must have no vanity whatsoever. He doesn't give a shit what he looks like. He well, probably he well, can afford that. He can afford it. Yeah, he can say, "I got enough money. Fuck you," you know. But of all the people that's still alive, you know, him. Did you know, I, I read something uh, that he, he um, either had a child late in life and and stopped all his uh, drug use and, and other use, then maybe that's why he's still alive. No, I think he stopped his drug use because uh, he realized it was going to kill him. And yeah. uh, they had a system. They had a thing. Did you hear this, Rob, that Keith Richards had a special thing done to get him off drugs? They changed the entire blood in his system, which immediately, I did not hear that. Which immediately cleaned him out. Really? And then the only well. thing he had to do was not do drugs. Because the urge wasn't there, because the withdrawal system the symptoms weren't, because there was no residual heroin in his in his blood. It's so, interesting. Yeah, 
Now, if 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 I could, you know, why don't they just do that with everybody? Well, because it's too expensive. My it's friend, six quarts of blood can't. Well, you get your. We got enough trouble. We got enough trouble when there's a fire or something, and they need enough blood to take care of the. You know, yeah, the I, yeah. yeah I have a friend that his daughter has MS, and he took her to Moscow. Uh, where they did, they took all the blood out, and then they uh, injected stem cells, and uh, supposedly it helped, but uh, $50,000 later, we're not sure. Yeah. And that, that, he just had it done a few months ago. And that's, that's of course, what's made Putin a billionaire. So Yeah, yeah. well, they, they wash all the blood out, and they put in stem cells and some other stuff, yeah. and uh, it takes two weeks of, of these treatments. I think I had somebody that I knew that had their blood replaced, and and that did it for them. They got off heroin that way. Wow! But you got to be able to afford it. You know, it's not cheap. Yeah, they, they. I guess they use a lot of blood to wash it through. I have no idea. You know, I I don't need it. <laughs> you know, so uh, where's that noise coming from? It's a little bit of noise. Is it? Uh, Oh, well, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking to see where the noise is coming from. Yeah. Anyway. No, so I didn't have much of a birthday today. It was, uh, uh, I didn't even get any presents now that I think about it. So, you know, I always, I always, when I was a kid, I loved my birthday because I was the only child in the family. And so all the attention was placed. What are you giving me the no sign for? Are you nodding your head? No, Scott. Like you're not surprised to find out I was an only child? No, I'm not surprised. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you, know, you know what your present was? It was uh, one more year of good health, and uh, that's a pretty damn good present, you know. Uh, are you guaranteeing that? Well, that's what you had this year. Well, so you know, uh, you can get. I can get bad health during the year. Well, we'll we'll watch out for you. You know. So, well, anyway. maybe maybe you get your blood transfused and. You know. Anyway, uh, let me see here. So, uh, uh, so uh, you know, so I didn't have much of a birthday today. It wasn't it wasn't like the old days where uh, there were a whole bunch of presents and you know things like that. And well, and, and I don't know what kind I, of birthday can you have when you say thank you five hundred times? Exactly. <laughs> well, also, she she uh, um, um, you know, Marjorie will say to me, "Well, what do you want for your birthday?" And I can't think of anything I want for my birthday. You know. Uh, and, um, <laughs> you know, I understand Christmas is coming. There isn't a thing in the world that I want. Nothing. Yeah. You know, yeah. no more junk. I don't need any other toys. I, Bullshit. I'm, 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 I'm just done buying something soon. Enough. Oh, oh, <laughs> listen, you got to get Faye something. Otherwise she'll never let you forget it. Yeah, that's well, I'll get her, but I don't want anything. You know, <laughs> now I, I bought stuff that I, I don't even use. Uh, the, the last thing I bought was this. It's called the Arsenal. And what it does is it goes on top of a camera and it takes it electronically uh, uh, takes all sorts of different pictures to combine it and make portraits uh, or landscapes that are totally in focus and, and perfectly exposed. It was uh, some uh, Kickstarter thing. And uh, I haven't even opened the box. You know, I, yeah. I, I got to stop buying this crap. Well, you know, no, you do buy. You do, you do overbuy, you know. Uh, but, you know, that's you. You know, and I suppose if I had the money, I'd be doing stupid shit like that, too. You know, yeah. but I don't right now. So I, I'm careful about what I buy and where I buy it and so on. Like I'm thinking of buying that, uh, uh, that uh, Mac garbage can. That's yeah, what they call it. I'm thinking of buying it off uh, off of uh, uh, be, uh, what do you call it? eBay, because uh, supposedly you buy, some of these companies are very reputable and they have good ratings and they refurbish the machines. And so you know, refurb is just as good as anything else. You you, you can get a six core with sixteen gigs for uh, twenty nine ninety nine from Apple. Yeah, but you know what I can get from them. From these guys, uh, I can get a 12 core with uh, t with a two th uh, with a, with a thousand uh, gigs of storage of flash storage. Yeah, yeah, you know. So um, for uh, thirty thirty two hundred. Yeah, 
Yeah, well, but that's pretty good. Yeah, that's very. I, I've got a six core, and uh, it, it's fine. You know, yeah, well, let's it, not get into this. I'm sick and tired. No right. more tech talk on this show. Yeah. No more but, tech talk. All right. No more Trump. No, we can't do that. <laughs> oh, no. No. We couldn't, we couldn't do that. Um, but anyway, so I, no, but I, I you know, I, I imagine if you, if you buy something off of eBay, and especially something like a Mac, it's probably in pretty good shape. They say there are no dings. It's like new. You know, they have their technicians uh, refurbish it and make sure it's all everything's working properly. So, you know, uh, and there's a 100% satisfaction guarantee yeah. in some of these companies. So what the hell, you know. Um, so that's my, you know, my other thing. And well, then, I, I think you'll like it. Yeah, then, then again, well, I haven't bought it yet. Uh, then again, I got this uh, this thing. This this uh, I, I've been reading about it. I understand everything now about raids. Okay, so you don't have to tell me. I sent you something. You know, I don't know if you could have read it. No, I, took I, a I, 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 I think I pretty much understand it. You know. All right. Yeah, you would. And then if one of your drives goes bad, you pull it out, you put the next one in, it rebuilds. And it, it heals so it. Right. It right. heals it. Yeah. So uh, that sounds like a good idea to me. I just, I've got this thing and I bought four drives for it. Now I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to put on it because I have other network drives that are working just fine. Yes, what, Jeff. What kind of drives did you get? Uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Patrick. I got the ones you, you suggested. Uh, uh, f the Reds? Uh, no, Enterprise. Oh, yeah. Enterprise, 7,200 RPM. Uh, yeah, yeah, Robin. Uh, yeah, Robin, so. yeah, eighty nine bucks a piece. Wow, that's great. Yeah, so, uh, but uh, mine didn't arrive yet. Mine are coming Friday. Yeah, I'm supposed to get mine Thursday. Yeah, well, that's why they're not here yet. Because <laughs> the the company we ordered it from didn't have them in stock. Oh. Oh, the, oh they said they weren't going to have them till the nineteenth. And then they. We got an email saying it was coming it, it sooner. Should. Yeah, 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 yeah. So anyway. they sent you Alex's. Yeah. yeah right. So anyway, so we're, you know, uh, um, you know, I, I, I figure it's what the hell. You know, I, I didn't pay for the, uh, I didn't pay for the, uh, the, box. Uh, the box because I, I realized I had this American Express uh, rewards points, and it took care of the whole cost of the goddamn thing. Is that different than miles? Yes. I don't know. I somehow I got them. Gary, my business manager, said you probably got them because for years you were using the American Express at Costco, right? And so it just built up and built up and built up and built up. And I know I may have signed up for the rewards program. All you had to do was sign up for it. And so by the time and I forgot about it, and then I saw this thing on Amazon it said this would uh, cost a zero if you use and it can check to see how many rewards points you have and i went what's that about and i called gary and i said what is it and he says i don't know look it up i looked up reward points and they said and i checked in with my account and they said oh you have so many rewards points uh and uh yeah it took care of a 289 dollar uh unit you know very not nice bad. yeah I mean, what else am I going to use that for? Blowjobs in Caracas? I love using the word blowjobs. Do you notice that? That's my sense of humor. Um, blowjobs in Caracas. Where did I come up with that? Hello, Kevin. Oh, Kevin's on the phone. Uh, hi, Tony. Hi. Happy birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, so it, it's, uh, yeah, it's my birthday today, and I'm, I'm 79 years old, and uh, I don't know. Does that get me a seat on the subway at all? Is it not in New York? Yeah. Not in New York. <laughs> you, you know what pisses me off is when I get on the subway. See, I mean, come on. I'm, I, 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 I get, I'm old. All right, I'm 79 years old. All right. Yeah. I should get a seat on the subway. I'm sitting. I'm on the subway, standing there. And there's some woman with her kid, a little tot, right? Who's taking up a seat. Now, what remember the saying, yes. little enough to ride for free, little enough to ride your knee. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. <laughs> That's right. 
And I'm going, you know, uh, and I sometimes I'll see mothers let the kids sit and they'll stand. And I'm going, what are you trying to do? Get the, this kid, this is a kid. He's resilient. Let him yeah. stand. Fuck him. D- duct, duct tape him to the pole. Am I right, Jeff? <laughs> I agree. My parents would never let me sit if there was an elderly person yeah. standing. Yeah. Get up and give, give, give that person your seat. Yeah. Yeah. I've had people bump me out of seats. Going to the handicap seats. <laughs> <laughs> and people bump me out of the way. Holy crap. Oh, so even have a Assholes. You ought to make a t shirt for hey, that. You know what I want to do? Sure, I'm sure I'm sure uh, Patrick <laughs> knows that story. I told girlfriend this and I said uh, I came back from Costco the other day and I said uh, we've got f- we've got four more weeks to get you over to Costco. And she said, what do you mean thing, four right? more weeks to get me over to Costco? And I said, oh, you got the thing you could ride. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I said, I said we got phone. four more weeks that you could go there and use one of those carts. Right in front, Alex. It's great. Yeah. You can use the cart even you if you're not disabled. You just take it. No, no, no. You have to, you have to, you have to show your cripple card. Yeah, you gotta, we bring my, my brothers says, get mommy's handicap thing, we'll park in the front. We did it Sunday. Well, no, no, that's parking. I'm talking about well, the, the carts that they you know, have. The electric. I, don't need, I don't need the car because she wasn't with us. Yeah, well, no, but I, mean, show it out I don't there? care if you don't need the cart. I oh, want I her you. to be able to, we never can oh, use I, those oh, fucking carts. I want to yeah. be able to have her use I, it. Yeah. They make you show it out there? Really? What? They make you show your card out there? No, no, no. Card? No, I'm kidding. No. Oh, oh. Different say, no. Wow, they're pretty they're strong. <laughs> but, but I don't think they would like it very much if I walked in not being crippled. Do you mind yeah, using that term? Little... <laughs> but they don't like, know. Just... They don't know Wait, if you have problems walking. Wait, wait a minute. Or... Patrick, am I being uh, insensitive at all? No. I, no. I mean, you, you don't know if people have heart yeah. Or breathing conditions. True. To, um, to, you, that's why I don't. I don't get upset when I see people who can walk, uh, parking in handicap spots. And I don't know what their health issue is. Yeah. What the problem is, if they talk like a fucking moron. Now, that now Patrick. Patrick doesn't he, need a scooter because he brings his own chair. That is never well, used a scooter anyway. You, you, what, you use it anyway? I couldn't use it. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. It's not safe enough for me to transfer out of my chair. Yeah. Into, so. Yeah. Yeah, well, I just. But I, 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 yeah, just... I know what you're saying, Patrick, because I've, 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 uh, there's a Target here when one night I was leaving Target and we got a bunch of rednecks that like to park their four wheel drive trucks, the kids, they park their four wheel drive trucks out in the parking lot. And they were out there doing bumper cars with the scooters, and I got pissed. Oh, and I really? went out there and I go, "You assholes, put them things back!" And they just laughed at me. So I called the cops, and I said, "They're out there playing bumper cars with the with the freaking, you know, I'm a, I'm a, you know, crusty old man." Yeah. So I yelled at them. What are they? They yelling, "Santa Claus called the cops on us." That's exactly what I said. <laughs> you assholes! <laughs> I go, "There's people that need those things, you jackoffs." Yeah, get the sleigh and uh, you know. And I called the manager of the reindeer. store and sent them in there, and it, that's those kids again. God damn it! Get off my lawn. You know what you you know what you could do. I, I was just of course thinking, I probably would have done it when I was a kid. I was just hello there by the way um, uh, to uh, Josh Wheeler who's joining us. Remember Josh? Hello. Then yeah. called us last week too. Anyway, um, I was just thinking of of Kevin. That since it's 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 uh, Santa Claus time and you're not doing Santa Claus this time of the year, why don't you put yourself in a uh, in a Muslim outfit? Because you would pass for that now. <laughs> he, he's going in for an operation. He doesn't want to piss anybody off. Only two days away. You know. Um, it just I could show you my driver's license from about six years ago, and you would think I was a terrorist. Really? <laughs> That's really? when everything was black. Yeah, there's uh, there's Josh. Hello, Josh. Hello, how you doing? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're coming up. My father used to say about this time of the year that uh, Christmas is at our throats again. Uh, yeah. And uh, he he felt that it was a it was a pain in the ass. But then again, we're Jewish, so you know. 
but uh, uh, I guess, uh, how are, are all of you celebrating Christmas in some way? I imagine Kevin has to. It's by it's law, right? Yeah. Uh, you're you're going to be here on you're going to be here on Friday, right? In your uh, Santa Claus outfit. Either tomorrow or Friday. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to have your little elf with you. Uh, I'm not sure. She might have to sit on my lap, and I'll have this device in my back, so I don't know. Oh, I oh that you. When are you getting that device? Thursday morning. Thursday morning, the device in your back. Yeah. Hey, you know, Kevin, I had a customer today that told me that he had Parkinson's disease. Oh. And uh, he didn't look like he had it. He wasn't shaking. Uh, so I said, I saw this Ray Donovan thing where uh, one of the brothers had Parkinson's, and they inserted uh, this box in his chest that sent an electrical impulse, and it stopped the Parkinson's. He says, I've got one. And he opens up his shirt and shows me the scar. And uh, so I guess maybe this electronic thing that they're putting in for you uh, is is a technology that really works. And, yeah, and, they say it does. It's yeah. this thing. Nevro 10. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. That is your insurance. It's about this big. It's about that big. Yeah. Does your insurance. But they're only going to tape it to yeah. me first for a week. I see. Uh. D d does the insurance to pay for it? Okay. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it now because they're paying for it, you know, before the end of the year. Where they tape it to you because if you if they don't pay for it, they pull the tape off and take it back. <laughs> yeah, if I run, you know, they can yank it out while I'm running. <laughs> yeah. we, really? we got we got a runner. We got a runner. <laughs> we got a runner. <laughs> uh, uh, no, oh. probably because they want to, you know, want to make sure it works before they insert it in it. That's yeah, I've got to have a fifty percent. Uh, Pain reduction. Speaking of that, I used wow. to feel the Better. same way about my penis. So, you know, I wanted to um, tape oh, it. Maybe through. I can rearrange it and yeah. put it in a different place and it'll <laughs> get a 50% yeah. increase. Yes, uh, <laughs> yes, Jeff. Yeah, I was curious from Kenneth. Uh, where, where is the location? Where uh, the pain they're is putting right it down now. by my L5, I think. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. That's the lower back? Uh, yeah, it's going to my lower back, and they're going to attach it to a couple of nerves that go up to my brain and down to my legs. Oh, yeah. Now, does it, does it always work? Or like uh, with the one I saw on Ray Donovan, the guy had a remote control to turn it up and turn it down. Really a remote? Well, supposedly uh, they can do that over the phone for the, for the temporary one. They can increase it and decrease it. And then once I get the permanent one in there, they just set it. With and the, I guess they with, can reprogram with it. With the but. addition of uh, of uh, John Rockwell, we have a full house here. Wow. Happy birthday, Alex. Thank Happy you very birthday. much, John. Uh, is Scott Boddicker, are you still there? Scott got a haircut. He's all, he's yeah, no, no camera. Yeah. Uh, he's still the hair. Scott, are you there? Y yeah, I'm here. I'm just oh. muted. Oh, I, okay, because we oh, can't your see your camera's picture. off, too. Your camera's off. Yeah, I know. I'm, I just, it's Okay. What 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 wedding? I'm not saying anything anyway. What, Don't worry what, about what, what what wedding was that a picture of? I guess it's one of your daughters, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are those all hey, your oh. daughters? Yes, all mine. Oh wow! Did you have any boys? Did you have any boys? Uh, no, no, I did not. Oh boy! So you were in a house full of nothing but women. Yeah, I, I have a boy dog now, finally, a male dog. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I feel Scott, your pain, Scott. I feel your Scott, pain. Scott, Scott yeah. moved to a new house a few months ago. How are you enjoying that? Oh, uh, it, it's okay, but it's small. Yeah. Uh, is it easier to take care of, you know, than all that acreage you had? Uh, yeah, it's a lot easier. It, but it's, yeah. I don't know. With four it's, women it's, it's in the okay. house, he needed. It's growing on me. It's growing on me. It's yeah. it's change. I don't like change. With four yeah. women in the house, he needed more bathrooms, right? Well, well there's only two of us now, so we're yeah, okay. I'm saying, I got one. He's got one. We're fine. But where you were, you had to have enough bathrooms to take care of everybody. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. How many yeah. how many bathrooms do you have in the house? Uh, the other one had four. Let's see, wow. one for, one for four. each woman. Mm -hmm. So where did you? Uh, where, no, yeah, yeah, no. I guess. As long as Scott didn't have to pee, <laughs> I, I just go outside. <laughs> That's why you had to move. You know something? 
Contamination. I don't know where it is Tony lives, but it's the noisiest street in the world. I just it's saw like, the, I, I just saw yeah. the car go by with the siren blaring. I'm telling you, there's a lot of muggings going around now. Really? The, it's, it's nice. Yeah. There's a lot of muggings going on around here. I lock the doors now. I think well, so. it's that Tony. Tony, go outside and and hold your wallet in your hand. I'm telling you, they <laughs> shoot me in a minute for my ten bucks. <laughs> Not even a question is. It's a mugging yeah. time of the year. Yeah. It's crazy over here now. It's oh, too cold way, to mug anybody in New York. You're probably right, but I'm telling you, there are like vultures over here, I think. There's always cops flying by them. It's getting bad. Yeah. She, they're worse than my mother right now. She's driving me crazy, I'll tell you that. <laughs> really? She, yeah, you know, I'm not sure. Are you almost, guess, are you almost, are you almost uh, regretting the fact that she didn't have something really wrong with her? You know, I tell you the truth. I <laughs> thought about something you said, Alex, a while back. And I was talking to my brother. I, f I feel bad for her because what she's going through. And I mean, I know they can help her, but I kind of feel bad because now I think she's forgetting now a little bit, like at night. It's like I gave her her medicine. She's like, did you give me my medicine? I said, no, I gave no, you no, at no, six Tony, Tony, it's just the way you say things because already <laughs> I forgot what you were talking about. <laughs> it's like I mean, she's driving me crazy. So I said, "Ma, I gave it to you," and I show her the pillbox. Oh, okay, maybe you did. Ma, it's not there. Tuesday PM is gone. Anybody have anything technical they want to talk about? <laughs> <laughs> hey, maybe we should have a gabnet mugging. Hey, Tony, you got a quarter? Yeah. What hey, you mean you ain't got no quarter? Drop by the tree. I can tell you that. All, it's all I find. All I find. But you don't. You don't. You don't live in a dangerous neighborhood, do you? No, it's when you can walk. I tell you one thing: when you walk towards the Queens Boulevard, yeah. it starts turning a little bit. It gets a little seedy, like the other side is like ten minutes from me. Like well, are, uh, are there Boulevard? a lot of people there, as you referred to them in a in a in a letter I saw that you wrote to Shecky uh, that you called coloreds? No, actually, no. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm afraid of the whiteies, really. It's a, I think I Queens people Boulevard people was named for all the gay people. All right, well, was all the gay people are on Queens Boulevard. Yeah, right? all, all the gay people. Boulevard, Boulevard yeah. of Death. It's like if you walk ten minutes down and go towards Sixty First Street, it's starting to change. Like it's rough. It's not rough like they're going to kill you, but I wouldn't want to live over there. I can tell you that. Like, there's bars all over the windows. Hey, do the Muslims bars live across the street not, from you? That's that settle, deli. Settle, 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 anybody who goes Okay, in settle down, Tony. Mm -hmm. Settle yeah. down. <laughs> I, I just I get, had... a little, no, I mean, get a little nervous around here. It's my mother. She drives me crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. And then because your mother there drives you, you crazy, you drive us crazy she about your mother. She yeah. succeeded, yeah. Tony. I don't know. My sister just called me. How is she doing? The same as before. Yes, she's sleeping. All right, Tony. Enough me. is enough. We heard it. Because I'm going crazy. Uh, you're driving me nuts. Oh, sorry. It's your birthday. <laughs> That's my birthday. Yes, uh, Jeff. See, I grew up in Queens. Uh -huh. And I always thought that the craziest person in the world was Trump from Queens. Yeah, right. But now Tony's... <laughs> I'm inching getting it. close. Sh it, yeah, yeah, I think it's my nerve. Tony's right inching in. Getting there. closer, right? Yeah. Yeah. He's got his finger on the button. Hey, uh, let me let me let me ask uh, 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 Josh a question because anytime it's stuff about the law and about uh, courts and things Constitution. like that, he's our go-to guy. Uh, let me ask you, uh, Josh, this decision today by this judge not to sentence uh, uh, Kelly. Yeah, yeah um, um, Flynn. 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 I get mixed up. Both I have Irish now. names. Flynn. Why do you do that? Well, I think they just delayed it today, didn't they? Yeah, they delayed yeah. it, but why? What uh, uh, they said that he was not going to sentence a man who he doesn't think might be not guilty. Might he doesn't think is guilty? Uh, he he doesn't think that Flynn got a fair shake. No, and, that's uh, not the way I now, read it. There, there's a lot of wait conservatives wait a minute, wait a minute, that are saying that this that uh, Sullivan was wrong that's, in, in doing that's that. not the way I read it. I read it that he did, that he felt that that uh, Flynn literally he was wondering why he wasn't being tried for treason. Yeah, where'd you get your where'd news you from? Where'd you get your information? Yeah. He's going to judge. And he and yeah. he he said I could uh, I, if I were to if I were to sentence you right now you would not be happy with the sentence. So uh, you have the uh, ability to put it off. But no, he wasn't putting anybody down for not giving him due process. He was putting people down for not getting enough. 
I thought they said that he was framed. No, you know, no, 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 that was Trump. Trump is framed. <laughs> He's confused. Trump framed him. Have we got this yeah. wrong, Josh? Did you, are you familiar with the situation? <laughs> I don't know. It it out. Wrong. Uh, Quite we right. as a group might not have it wrong. One individual uh, among this group <laughs> might have it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> One? I mean, the... I was watching the news today when that happened, and uh, you know, because I'm off for a few days, so I was home. And the, I mean, the impression I got was that the, the sentencing was delayed at the uh, request of the prosecution. Right. And the indication was that, um, they're going to delay it in, uh, further because he's still cooperating. And, right. So they feel supposed- like he still has yeah. more to offer. And you know, I mean, but, um, but also, despite what yeah, Donald Trump sorry. thinks. Yeah, this is not a new phenomenon. Uh, the more people cooperate, um, the more help they get at sentencing. So because he's not done yet, um, I think they, you know, they just basically decided to wait. So for all the uh, people running around and saying, well, you know, Michael Cohen, he's just singing like a bird to get time knocked off of a sentence or whatever. I mean, OK, but he, apparently he's not the only one, you know, so. Um, that was why I thought they delayed it. Yeah, it and I, th- I, I also it it looked like the judge wasn't of a desire to go along with the plea agreement and take that into right. consideration. Yeah, uh, it did appear like the judge, uh, you know, was ready to sentence, and uh, it uh, didn't sound like he was going to go along with their no jail time uh, thing, well, which, he, as far he, as I know, he has the right to you know to do, but most sensible judges will you know say even though i don't like this you know uh we we don't typically step in the way of plea agreements well, he, because he, it could he, you know hurt, the, hurt prosecutors down the road the so only thing that ju- the judge asked flynn was uh were you coerced into taking this right. plea in exchange for whatever and flynn said no absolutely not and so, therefore, the judge said, well, then, you know, I, I feel I have to sentence you to something because I'm surprised that you haven't had treason thrown at you. Right. You know, and uh, uh, they chose to let him wait till May, March something, May, March 13th or something to, to make right. his decision. But you're wrong, Phil. Uh, everybody, well, that, if, you're if gonna you have look a good... at the headline, uh, it says Michael, uh, Michael Flynn... Uh, sentencing postponed after judge issues blistering rebuke. Now that's CNN. The and... rebuke was of Flynn, though, not right. of the prosecution. Mentioned treasonous. Yeah, you basically yeah. let your country down, is what they said. Uh, no, he he said, uh, did they consider uh, trying him for treason? Yeah, and yeah, that was one of the questions. Yeah, so where you're you're looking to make your what you said right, and you can't find it, can you? I'll, I mean, find even Fox was <laughs> I'll find it. I'll find it. This is a topsy turvy world we live in. Yeah, you know exactly. where where hookers are a legitimate pr- uh, 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 profession, uh, where uh, abortion is is good and killing the unborn is is good. You know, it, it's 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 a topsy turvy world. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I'll find it. <laughs> even your own network was was trashing them. Yeah. Well, that's because he flipped. No, but Trump seemed to love him. He, he Today he had a tweet that went, good luck Jeez on your old. sentencing right. today. You know. Well, you know. Trump, orig- Trump goes up to his cabinet and he goes, you know, this thing of ours, just like the mafia. Yeah. You know, this <laughs> thing of ours, it's more important than anybody, any family. The family comes first. Right, you and you're a rat if you talk. Dirty you're rat. a rat. Yeah, yeah you're a, a rat. Dir- yeah. A dirty rat. Well, I mean, dirty. Uh, it, 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 uh, all of what he does seems to have a a patina of yeah. mobsterism. He's from you know. Queens. Are you are you are you going to be that way? Are you going to be loyal to me? Are you going to be loyal to me? Take the loyalty oath. Oh, Omerta. Let's have the Omerta. Omerta. Yes. Yeah. You know, hey, uh, you know, Jeff. You were born in Queens. Uh, yes. do, do you have a ball peen hammer? Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> <laughs> the blood no stained handle. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy. It's 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 issued at birth. <laughs> yeah. Here's the rattle, here's the hammer, here's the gun. <laughs> yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, they don't give you a baby rattle. They give you a ball peen. <laughs> so, John Rockwell, what's new in your life? John? Oh, I thought... I I didn't realize you were talking to me. I was actually well, I going on YouTube said John to see if I could find what are you see if I could find the uh, Godfather music at this point to run. <laughs> da, 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 da. Now, I, all right, we'll dump Safari out of here. Um, well, what is new in my life? <laughs> I don't know. Now, you know, keep busy anyway, which is good. Yeah. Uh, he's talking about growing up or. or different neighborhoods in, in uh, Manhattan or in, in New York back in the day. When I started working for you back in the 70s, I lived in Brooklyn about, oh, three or four blocks from Pratt Institute, which is in uh, uh, what's now, well, it was Fort Greene, but it was called, now called Clinton Hill. Thing is, everybody in the, around that area uh a lot of the apartments and everything were cut up into into dorm rooms for the students because they had like one big dorm and that was about it and a lot of lot of students the thing is there was nothing else to do in the area if you walked about five or six blocks in the wrong direction you basically you went to where biggie smalls grew up you know it was like hello we're not going it there. must be where and, tony uh, says the colors so, live yeah now yeah. of course it's all gentrified or more gentrified they've got they've got Ital uh, you know cuban restaurants and german restaurants it's like you know i why did i even leave now it's really nice there but my you know now i'm here on the semi-posh upper east side and uh you know, it's just a whole different, whole different thing. But when I first got here, my my parents came to visit me when I first got here in the mid seventies, and they drove up and they drove through the neighborhood to get to my place, and they're just like, uh, "Where are you? <laughs> you know, don't go up. <laughs> Hello, where do we go?" So yeah. So anyway, in, in the news, in the news. Um, um, it looks like uh, what's his name isn't going to get 150 million dollars, 120 million dollars, 150. Which is Moonves? What's his name? L Moonves. Oh yeah. Like, oh, uh, he's yeah. not getting his. Because they say they they won't say what it was, but that he uh, he went against his contract. Uh, well, and, I thought and it was still part of that. You know, screwing around with women or something. You know. Yeah. Well, it has to do with that. But yeah. you know, the thing is that he is. Uh, um, uh, well, the man's not poor. I mean, come on. No, he was making. I think he. I think he had seventy-five billion or something. Million, I don't ever know billion. billion or something. No, he, so Moonves gets he, nothing, and uh, Weinstein's going to walk. Well, is, no, no, uh, is he? I don't think he's going to nah, walk. Well, it, well you're, it, when you're talking about Weinstein walking, you're talking about about walking from criminal prosecution. Moonves right. hasn't been not hit civil, with any. Definitely. You know. Uh, Hey, if he doesn't get the 120 million, it is cripple. It is criminal, you know. That's uh, for him. Yeah. Well, I'm not going to feel sorry for him, but I don't think he's going to let it just happen. Yeah. Okay. I don't think he's going to let it just uh, go without uh, turning around and suing uh, CBS. Especially since there's been no due process. Well, I mean, what 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 they're claiming is that he had to in order to get the 120 million. I think it was. Uh, he had to not do anything that was illegal or bad or whatever, and that he didn't help in the investigation, that he lied during the investigation, and he destroyed evidence. Yeah, but he he hasn't been convicted of anything. He he's free now to join the Trump uh, administration. Yeah, he's got all the qualifications. He's got That's all the true. qualifications. Yeah, yeah. No, but he. Um, um, what I loved about this whole thing, I said this the other night was being able to pick up the New York Times, the reputable New York Times, the the pi pa the pinnacle yeah. of American journalism, and be able to read a description of what this woman said went on with Les Moonves. Well, <laughs> he took my head and shoved it down on his penis. That was in the New York Times. <laughs> All the news that's fit to you print. You know, and if this whole thing... Hey, you see their ads, ha there, you know, hasn't the truth been, matters. It yeah. hasn't come to anything... It's worth it for that. Sure. <laughs> you know. All right. 
the P word finally gets put out. On, <laughs> no, but but more than that, a real graphic description of oh, what definitely. went on. Yeah. You wow, know, which was amazing, just amazing. So the fact that that uh, that happened, it means there's some good in all of this. Uh, <laughs> But uh, it, it turns out that uh, Mr. Um, you know that um, Moonves wasn't that um, that nice a guy. You know, guess not. I don't think any of those guys are that nice. Well, a you, guy. Well, you know what it is. I think if they were nice guys, people wouldn't be throwing them to the wolves. You know, yeah. if they sit around waiting for something like this to happen. And um, I'm uh, by the way, I got a uh, I got a Christmas card from somebody who uh, was a. I, I won't say who it was, a big player in all of this who got lost his job uh, over at CBS because of improprieties. Didn't you say that you knew somebody who was like a neighbor or something and uh, he was an executive at CBS, uh, a, a big big executive, and there was some impropriety? When? Uh, recently? No, no, several, a couple of years ago. Uh, no, no. Uh, the, the guy was a head of the, head of a network or something. Well, I I I, I knew a, I, we lived in an apartment. When we first came yeah, to that, New York. Yeah. We lived in Riverdale. And we lived in an apartment, and my wife uh, um, Ronnie at the time uh, got to know a woman in the building, right? And she was married to the president of ABC. Okay, that's the guy. Yeah, yeah. And one uh, night she, she had been on a soap opera. And he he uh, married her, found her, married her, and made her his wife. And she came down one night, and she was, um, I think she was pregnant at the time, and she was drunk out of her mind. Not a good and, idea. And yeah. she comes down to to my place, and and my friend Michael O'Donoghue, if you all remember who oh, yeah. Michael O'Donoghue was, was there, National and we Lampoon. were all sitting around just talking. And all of a sudden, she knocks on the door, and she walks in, and she's crying her eyes out. She just, you know, uh, the, the, her husband treats her like shit and blah, 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 blah. And then she's doing, she, she starts going into what is nothing but just pure soap opera language. Love? What does he know of love? Oh, <laughs> he actually funny. said that. Love? <laughs> what does he know of love? And then uh, I, she sits down between me and Michael. And then she all of a sudden starts jumping on me. Or was she just excited? Uh, she <laughs> she had a certain and my and Ronnie is there. Okay, I'm married. Yeah, right. Hello. And this woman is jumping me, and I'm looking at Ronnie like oh I don't know the cat yeah. in those Pepe Le Pew cartoons when they don't like it's being like held, you know. And I'm going, I see, I'm not touching her, you know. <laughs> and finally, she notices that I'm not going to do anything. She, she jumps on, on, on Michael. And finally, she passes out. And we all drag her up to her apartment. And we get back into, the, into, the, um, into our apartment. And Michael O'Donnell looks at me and says, you know, I've been writing parodies about this kind of stuff, about novels that are like this. He said, I didn't realize till now they're all true. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was some, some yeah. uh, that story you yeah. told a and long he time was ago. The, he was the president of ABC. Uh, um, and when, uh, I was I, at, I, when I was at ABC, I never got fired, and I often wondered why. And I thought maybe it was because I knew some, he knew I knew something, you know. Well, you know, uh, Summer Redstone, uh, uh, they said, is uh, now uh, it, it doesn't have any capacity. I guess uh, people have taken over for him. That his, he's, his daughter, I think, is, is yeah. running yeah. the company. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, all of these big executives, they're all, Her name they're is all Sherry. falling like flies. Sherry Redstone. And she wanted, see, she wanted, uh, she and, uh, uh, what's his name, uh, the former head of CBS, uh, Moon Moonves, Last Moonves. they're fighting over control of the company. Right. Okay. And uh, she was doing everything she could to get control of the company. And a lot of people believe that this came out as a result of her trying to get rid of Moonves, and it did it effectively. You know. Well, uh, did you? I, I saw a picture of Summer Redstone today, and he it's, it's does Sumner. look it's Sumner. He does it's look Sumner. Sumner. He uh, the only person that looks uh, worse than him was Keith Richards. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Sumner Redstone's a really old guy. Yeah. yeah. Really old guy. Uh, yeah. The, the fact that he held on that long, you know, but he's not capable of running the company anymore. He just no, you know, out of it. Anybody hear the other really big news coming out of the New York State Attorney General's office today? Yep. yep. Oh, the uh, Trump Foundation? Oh, yeah. Isn't that, isn't that special? Well, it. well, it's just another way to distribute the money. You know, it's socialism. So, I'm hide the money. You know, okay. They're going to so, make them give so, away all the money. Not Well, did you hear the charges? Uh, uh, no. Yeah, the charges are that... You don't uh, want to hear the charges, he, Bill, but listen no, to No, you it. really don't. It says here, the disillusion... The, the disillusion of the Donald J. Trump Foundation resolves one element of the attorney general's civil lawsuit against the foundation, which includes claims that the president and his three eldest children, Donald Jr., Ivanka, and Eric, violated campaign finance laws and abused its tax-exempt status. Rather than operating it as a genuine charity, the lawsuit alleges they instead allowed it to be used as little more than a checkbook to serve Mr. Trump's business and political interests. Well, then he'll so have to pay a fine. Right. Not only yeah. did, they, did, they, did they do that, and that's just part of it, they've also, they've also banned any of them, those people i just mentioned from ever being on the board of any charity again well, that the won't be a problem closed <laughs> that 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 won't be a problem you know no because they don't do anything charitable they they started the foundation yeah and so well, let's what's going on with the clinton foundation well the the, yeah, the, the trump the trump pound, the best one was trump foundation paid ten thousand dollars for a Some portrait kind of, of Donald yeah. Trump to be, I thought it was twenty five thousand. No, it, it was, might have been. I thought it, I think it was ten thousand, and to ha hang in Mar-a-Lago. Uh, the the cheapest one was uh, the Trump uh, philanthropy paid fourteen dollars to the Boy Scouts of America for for their somehow for, I just don't put Trump and philanthropy together. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But uh, they, they spent 14 bucks uh, t on a Boy Scout membership for, uh, what's his name, uh, Baron. Yes, yes, yes. Did he pay for that out of the, oh. out of the uh, fund, the yeah, uh, yeah. Trump Trust? Yep, yeah, yep. Yes, Patrick. No, thank you, no washi. I think the word you're looking for is philandering on Trump. <laughs> <laughs> it starts with Phil, and we won't get into that, yeah. Phil. Yeah, well, you know, I told you that uh, Rudy Giuliani told me that he paid off uh, an anonymous donation. Uh, the two cops that were killed in Brooklyn a couple of years ago, they were assassinated in their car, and he paid oh, off yeah, the mortgages for their uh, widows. And, uh, you know, why would he lie? Why, you know, why would he come up with something like that? If it well, what did he pay for it? No, well, I, this is Giuliani. Saying yeah, but what did he pay oh, for? Oh, it with? Even even better. Yeah, hmm? even better. Say again. What did he pay for it with? Uh, it was probably from that trust, you know, or, yeah, well, or that, it, was uh, that charity. What was that? What that trust was set up to do? That sort of thing. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know. The, well, I mean, it depends on how they were how they were uh, incorporated and so on. They were all rubles anyway. Does so. anybody know anything about that sort of thing? You know, <laughs> not really. Yeah. I hadn't heard of that one. Yeah, yeah. But, I remember. I remember the the incident, but yeah. I don't remember anything yeah. after that. Yeah. A lot of people did contribute to various, you know, supportive campaigns for the for the for the families. You know, but, I, you I, know. I said something. I'm glad he did. I mean, I hope he did. Yeah. You know, I mean, the guy was mayor for a while. He he has a New York connection. I mean, it's nice of him to do that. Doesn't mean he's doing all that great now. It's just he did that. You know, that's why it was. It was it was long Trump. before he. You know, it was it, before he was president. About a year well, and a half before, back. Oh, uh, I thought Giuliani paid off. No, he, no, no. He, Trump did it. Uh, Giuliani. Oh, I thought Giuliani paid off. You know. Uh, no, because uh, Giuliani is involved with a uh, organization called the Stephen Stiller Tunnel the to Towers, uh, yeah. and and so and, and so am I, and uh, yeah. you know Frank Stiller. Oh, it's Stiller. excellent. Yeah, yeah, and and uh, so Giuliani is involved with that, and so am I, and my the organization I'm part of, and that's how I was able to meet him. And uh, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. God, uh, you know, hmm? uh, I, I would love to meet uh, Rudy Giuliani. I've always desired to be within spitting distance of him. <laughs> I was sitting, 
I was sitting in a in a in a bar in my neighborhood when Giuliani was still mayor, and they had they they the the bar had their TVs on. It was like eleven o'clock. News was on, live a live shot of Giuliani with at that time the woman who was like the girlfriend, you know, walking up Second Avenue in my neighborhood, right in front of our bar, and all of us looked around like, oh shit, we should go. No, we didn't. You know, it's like ah, we just missed him. You know, he was right. He was right outside our door. Hey, you know, Jesus. with a woman that he wasn't supposed to be with. You yeah, know? Jesus. what the heck. You know? Well, he married her later on, and you know. yeah, well, yeah, good for him. But you know, still, you know, it was a little, it was a little freaky. It's like, it like the like, night that I was driving. Wait a minute, I know where that is. Like the <laughs> night that I was driving down through New York City in in my car, when I mm -hmm. had a car in New York City in the days when you, you could a have a car in New York City, and uh, I'm driving down the street, and the car next to me, all of a sudden, I notice it's a guy I know, and it, 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 peripherally. Uh, and the mm -hmm. guy is uh, 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 Geraldo Rivera. Oh. And, and uh, there's his head bobbing up and down. Uh, <laughs> oh, shit. And, and I, she was I, looking for her and, contact and, lens. And I look over at right. him, and then he looks over at me and realizes, of course, that he knows me, and I know him. And right. I just and went. He knows, and, and you I, know what he's, what's and, happening. Yeah, <laughs> and I just looked at him and went. <laughs> you know, hey. I gave him the okay <laughs> sign, you know. Good for you, um, man, yeah. But uh, he, at the time, he was married to Kurt Vonnegut's daughter. Oh, God, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I am, maybe not for much longer at that point. I don't know. <laughs> what are you doing, yeah, exactly. Patrick? It's his impression of Geraldo Thank you, Rivera. Beth. <laughs> By the way, what's got this? The visu got the visuals from Patrick. I like that. By the well, way. You know, now that you said that, Alex, that's the one thing that they have hand controls in the car make them possible because oh, well. there's no room for that sort of thing to occur and believe me it's been attempted and it just doesn't work yeah but yeah uh, you uh, need a bigger car well <laughs> yeah that that would yeah that that would work but uh how do you said uh damn it that that never happened with the hand control so mm. Now, did you hear can't about you this? The, can't you just push the seat back? You got. You don't need to. Your feet don't need to reach the pedal. It's all the way back. Yeah. All, no. Can't you get oh, a hand yeah. control that does the deed for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's a different kind of hand control. <laughs> I wonder. No, I wonder if uh, we if we go and get one of these carts at Costco, if I can ride with her and get a blowjob in the cart <laughs> as we're going through Costco. <laughs> That would be cool. The, the problem with me is I've got the suicide knob on the wheel. Oh, I see. So that's how I, I turn, so I'd be banging on the head every time I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's the idea. You, you got to get on the highway the where you're. You know? <laughs> You got to go on the highway where you're going straight Long from. Well, straight every straight kid, when I was Long growing up and we all had cars in Marin County, uh, oh, yeah. I, I, all of us had a suicide knob. On the steering wheel. So when we were driving, we could put our arm around the girl. No, right. it's because you had to turn the wheel 23 times just to make a left. Well, those things, those wheels were like this. Yeah. You know? yeah. yeah. <laughs> like driving a yacht. So anyway, did you hear about this? I didn't know about this till I read it earlier. Some advertisers are exiting a Fox News Channel show over controversial comments made by the host. Tucker Carlson is under fire after saying that immigrants could make the U.S. poorer and dirtier. <laughs> oh, there we go. So far, the show's biggest advertisers appear to be sticking with him in his primetime show, uh, 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 Tucker Carlson Tonight, but uh, uh, adding that the experts say the controversy is likely to blow over. Carlson said last Thursday that there was pressure from our leaders to accept immigrants, even if it makes our own country poorer and dirtier and more divided. Well, that's the uh, Build a Wall Foundation is his newest uh, advertiser. You the know. Build a Wall? Yeah. yeah. Build a Wall Foundation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, walls are us. Walls are us. <laughs> right. um, yeah. Walmart, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that's the latest. Real thing, Walmart, yeah. At least 16 companies have stopped advertising on Carlson's program. 
The publication oh, reported a list that includes Car Career Builder, Takeda Pharmaceuticals, makers of NTVO, uh, TD oh, yeah, Ameritrade, IHOP, the United Explorer credit card, Just for Men, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ancestry.com, Scott Evest, Zenny Optical, and Voya Financial, along with Bowflex, a Smile Direct Club, Nerd Wallet, Minted, and Pacific wow. Life. Um, later on big, Tuesday, big, Fox big, big issued big another clients, statement yeah. saying it wouldn't allow Carlson to be censored by agenda-driven intimidation efforts. Well, Whoa. they can, they can, t they, in, a, in a while, they're going to have to do something about that, you know, because uh, he sure has pissed off a lot of customers. Y yeah. Yeah. Hey, they got some extra cash. Maybe they'll use it on GabNet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Well, you know, you, you, it's, it's unfortunate that uh, advertisers are trying to use their, uh, uh, their money as a, a bully pulpit to silence, uh, you know, you know differ, always, differing opinions. Phil, that is, that, fucking, that, that is yeah, fucking more. bullshit, Phil. When somebody spends money to advertise, they're spending money to be on somebody's program. They're not, they're not there as a public service to anybody. And if they feel that where they're advertising is going to diminish their reputation in the eyes of the public, they can drop their advertising. You know, you're, you're, you're equating, you, you, as a Republican, I'm surprised you even said something like that. Yes. Well, I'm for free speech, you know, and uh, it's just... It has nothing to do with, with free speech. Is, has no, no, speech yeah. is free as long as you agree with yeah, it. No, it, no, 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 no. If you uh, can get moment, yourself in Patrick. trouble with it. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What? You could get yourself in trouble with free speech like he did. He has the right to say what he says, but people don't have, have a right not to support it. That's all. They have right not to spend money if they don't right, feel yeah. they're going to get their money's worth. Yes, Patrick. Yeah, I'm just going to say that, that they're spending money. So as, as capitalists, they can decide where they want to spend their money. And an example I'll give you, Phil, is here in Milwaukee, on the conservative uh, radio station that I listen to all the time, there are liberal organizations in Milwaukee that they pride themselves on being liberal that advertise on the conservative station because they provide a product that it goes across party lines. That, you know, so they know where they're spending their money. So, so I mean, toilet paper. <laughs> no, it, uh, it, it's a spice. They they do uh, spices. Uh, it's oh, whole... McCormick? What's that? Is it McCormick? No. It, it, no. It's, a, it's a smaller company. No. But well, they decide to spend money, and some of the, uh, the hosts on, on the channel, they rip them left and right because of their political views and what they do. Yes, no. they'll spend money for advertising. Well, it's uh, like what they did to Chick Fil A. Uh, to the the guy who was the uh, head of Chick Fil A says uh, he's no, Phil, not that the was game a, that was different though. Well, no, Phil, completely different situation. You're not talking about advertisers being dropped. You're talking about a boycott against a particular company and not to go and buy their product. Okay, uh, people, here, people, wait a minute. Uh, this is entirely different. This is you're saying that because people don't want to advertise, that that's fighting uh, freedom of speech. Uh, I'm sorry. It isn't freedom of speech to buy time. It isn't, a, you know, you can, re if you don't feel that you want to be in a certain atmosphere, let's say the host, let's say Tucker Carlson raped somebody, okay? They don't want to be in that, uh, in that atmosphere. Would you consider that wrong that they don't want to advertise? I guess if you're the Weinstein company, you'd want to advertise no, no, on that no, one. No, no, no. You always have to make a joke out of everything, Phil. But uh, yeah, I'm, you know, I see your point. You get what you I'm know, saying? It, Two different things, Phil. But the no, thing I, is, I see your point. I'll tell you where yeah. I had the converse of that, and then Patrick mm -hmm. had his hand up. Uh, the converse of that, the reverse of that, was uh, when I was doing King? when no when I was doing radio in San Francisco, and mm -hmm. I had a very popular show. A Republican Party wanted to buy time on my show during an election time uh, to pay, you know, to to uh, advertise for their candidates. And so I l let it go on. And they said to me, 
People would say to me, how can you let the Republicans advertise on your show? I said, anybody can advertise on my show. As long as they have a reputable product, anybody can advertise. I'm not going to tell the Republicans they can't advertise on my show. If they want to waste their money being on a lefty show like mine, I'm not going to hold it against them. You know. Although your show in San Francisco wasn't really lefty. I don't oh, think it was oh very yes, political. it was later on. It got quite oh political. later on. Uh, yeah, at, at, uh, at live one hundred and five, it became quite political. Yes, Patrick, you had your hand up. Uh, I was getting my coffee cup. No, no, but earlier you had your hand up, and I didn't go to you. I think, or did I? Yeah, I, I already yapped. I already said basically what you said that uh, we've got uh, left organizations in Milwaukee that advertise on a conservative station. Yeah, that's. That's up to them if they want to spend their money. Yeah. If, you know, if, yeah. What were you going to say, back, Rob? Back in the early days of television and radio, it was way worse because, you know, Philip Morris was the sponsor of I Love Lucy, and they really had something to say about Hold on the a content second. of Ray, the program. Ray, Ray Renati, if you're trying to call, I can't add you. We have we, we have, have a royal flush. We have a royal flush, and after that, I can't fit it on the screen, okay? So, Ray, please call back tomorrow night. We'll probably need you since we'll only I have can hang up if you want, Alex. If, well, if you want to hang up and we can let There's Ray call. There's not much just to make sure she's okay. Okay. Thank you, Tony. Happy I'm, birthday. I'm sure Ray will you. appreciate that. Yeah. Okay, Ray, you can call back now. Okay, all right. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me. And get there's Jack. Let me hey, Jack. Jack. Let me hey, King. How are you? Room. And then let me add. Here we go. There we go. There's Ray Renati. Yeah. Hey. There he okay. is. Okay. And Bree is calling. I'm sorry, Bree. I can't take your call. I cannot take your call, Bree. There's the noise. Huh? There's noise somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. There is some I noise. Oh, I know what. Why? Because. Uh, Ray is at the gym, uh, and we just lost him. Uh oh. Oh. And, and it's frozen. I, and I hung up all here. Let me. There he is. There we go. He's back. Me bring. Sorry. Him. I had to switch off a of Wi-Fi. Bree. Bree. Oh. Oh boy. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened here. We lost everybody. Wow. Wow. Huh. Well, that's uh, something. Let me see. What happens if I, if I try to call all these people? Okay. Here we go. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, here we go. Uh, everybody no, got hung I, up on? I, no. Uh, everybody's trying to call back using the same thing, though. You have to call back individually. I, I don't know what happened. You know, when I tried to put Bree everything on, just... everything just like went south. Oh, oh. Yeah. So um, Skype blew up. Skype blew up. Yes. Uh, you know, um, uh, let me see here. Uh, I'm, From having a better than full house, a royal flush down to nobody for the last 15 minutes. Down to nobody, just you and me. Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, let me see here. Uh, maybe I can call Patrick back. Maybe I can do that. Let me add him to the group call. Let me see if Patrick, uh, if I can call Patrick and see if he picks up. I don't know. We have no idea. Oh, uh, boy. Well, this sort of thing happens. Yeah, once in a while. Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, I'm, I won't hold on to him because uh, he's not picking up. So uh, Maybe they can't call back. Maybe they can't. It's can. hard to believe that Phil wouldn't be called back by now. Yeah, let me see here. Let me try. Calling. Nobody has tried. Yeah, nobody. Let me add Phil here. Let me see what happens if I call Phil. Nobody's calling back. Wow. You can't call Phil? Huh? You can't add Phil? I try, I'm trying to add Phil, but uh, he's not, uh, he's not uh, coming on. Hmm. Oh, there we go. There's Ray Renati. There, Ray Renati helped break the bank. Hello, Ray. Hey, hey. Are you there? There's Ray. Phil, are you yeah, there? Here. Phil's been, oh, here comes here comes Patrick. Okay, there's Patrick. All righty. So we're, st we're starting to get yeah, here comes Kevin again. We were uh, all on another uh, little deal about fixing a hanging. No, uh, it, that's that, why uh, nobody was calling. Uh, we're back. Why was nobody Someone's calling? Why, me. why was nobody calling? Did you say? 
because they were all on another call. They were all on their own private kind of call there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then okay. they just tried to well, call Well, whoever me. tries to call me back, make it a fresh call. Do not call using okay. like, the, the past group. Well, you found out that if you get 12 callers, it, it breaks it. <laughs> well, you think yeah, that's yeah. what happened? Do you yeah. think that's what happened? Nah, I think nah. that's what yeah, happened. Yeah, because they all got, it all went back to that group call. As soon happened. as I went to Bree. Oops, sorry. It, it's, as soon as I went to Bree. Uh, it, yep. uh, it, it, it crashed. That's Just what happened. absolutely crashed. Uh, Gotta be high. Huh? Damn it. Because what happened yep. was we went to the call with Bree and dumped all you guys. Oh. See, and I, I got I, hung I, I up on completely. I, I didn't get on anybody else's call. Wow. No, but we ended up on Bree's call. Interesting. Now my screen just readjusted itself. Oh, oh really? Oh, okay. Then there's uh, there's Jack Bishop. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jack's calling. Want to make? Am I still here? Yeah. John yeah. said he was going to bed. Uh, okay. Uh, who said he was going to bed? John Rockwell. Oh, John Rockwell. Okay, I I I understand that. Now here comes Bree. Uh, yeah. So he, he'll have oh, he room. said sorry. He's left me a note saying sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. we have room for him now. Well, we have room for you now, Bree. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but see, that was that was when everything crashed because I saw that text going on. It said, "Okay, I understand. Sorry." And then all of a sudden, Bree came on, and everybody else connected to that call, and you guys disappeared. Yeah, he hijacked it. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. That's what that's what you get for not adding them to the call. Oh, I, I have no idea. <laughs> but we we had so it all many. Went to his we, call. We, that literally would have made it twelve people, which I can't. Yeah. I can't fit. Well, on. you've had. It's 13. really easy to call the old. Yeah, an old one. Uh, you've had yeah. thirteen at at one uh, once on a video on a video call. Do you? Yeah, know that was before. That was before New Skype. Do you know which we can't we can't do here because not all of you have Max, but uh, uh, in uh, FaceTime. with with FaceTime you can now have thirty two people on at the same time. And I bet the quality is awesome. Okay, here comes Bree. Bree will not break the bank now. See. There we go. He probably he probably didn't break it last time. No, he didn't break it last time. <laughs> so Alex, hey, I can Al hijack what? your show anytime. What what'd you say, Bree? <laughs> I can hijack your show apparently. Uh, apparently, <laughs> you get you know. When you're number thirteen, oh. yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, uh, Jack. And I just want to say, this is one time you can't blame me for the technical breakdown. <laughs> no, I just I I I. I oh, will still blame you anyway, Jack. It was the black guy. Yeah, of course. Hey, look, I just wanted to say happy birthday, Alex. You look as good as you looked in 1959 when I met you. Really? It means he didn't look so good. Oh, that hey, must have, yeah. Everybody was saying, hey, that's a pretty old-looking young guy over there. Yeah. <laughs> but I happy birthday. Alex, your birthday. Happy birthday. Heard you guys talking about the selling of advertising. And, uh, you, you know, uh, at one time, Dallas had a local progressive talker that uh, I was manager of, and we ran into the problem any number of times where advertisers would say, we don't want to advertise with you guys because, A, I don't want my friends to know that I advertise on your station. Well, you know something? I'm going to hand it to Fox because, uh, you know, standing up for him, uh, in spite of the fact of, of, of a lot of advertisers leaving, because of comments that Tucker Carlson has made, uh, I think is what I would do if I had a radio station and we were uh, uh, doing political stuff and a bunch of advertisers wanted to quit because they didn't agree with our message, then I'd say, I, I, if you want to leave, leave, but I'm not firing the people that make these comments. I'm not changing the format or the political outlook to keep you happy. But, uh, you know, so I have to, on the other hand, hand it to Fox for towing the line, although they may eventually tow themselves uh, to the line to, to poverty, you know. We just see how long they do that, you know, because they might succumb uh, to, to the hey, pressure. It's all about money. Yeah. Yeah, it is all about, at bottom line, it is all about money. Yes, Bree. Speaking about money, I don't know if you covered this uh, in the last couple of uh, shows, but the Elisa Dushku. Um, Michael Weatherly CBS instance where she got 9.5 million because they didn't hire her for bull. 
uh, they she alleged uh, 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 that she was harassed and uh, let go after three se- three uh, shows, and uh, she got the nine and a half million for the shows that she would have been in uh, if uh, they hadn't let her go. But, but well, who was she harassed by? Uh, the guy who was the uh, star at in uh, Bull. I, I don't know his name. And he's and, Michael Wendell. and he still got yeah, he his was married. To, and he, he used st- to make, be married to Jessica Alba. So they but so they pa- they paid out nine point three million dollars, and he still got a job. Looks that way. Well, they're take. I guess they'll take it out of Les Moonves's uh, <laughs> retirement fund there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I, I, when I read that, I, I don't know about that. I. You know, uh, since then, a couple of other women actresses have come to, women actors have come to uh, his defense. But I don't know, like, the the sequence of events that occurred, it was something to the effect that, uh, I don't know, I, I, did, I thought it was uh, kind of a pretty big payout for that situation. Um, and ultimately, he apologized and he's i guess he's apologized again and so i'm wondering you know what how how do we resolve those things you know because if every time you make a crass joke or that fails or you know that's not appropriate um you know do we just pay it off or i I don't know moving forward you know because she's not the only one so i don't know did she just have a better lawyer (laughs) you know uh, it could be that that you know, uh, CBS didn't want to fight the fight that it would take to win the fight. They, they felt they would look better if they just paid the $9.3 million because they're also just being besieged by all these accusations because of, uh, of Moonves and a lot of other things. That the, supposedly the sexual climate at uh, 60 Minutes has been in great question at Present. There was Rose. There was uh, the the other guy, was uh, 60 Matt minutes Lauer. Deal. Well, that's over at NBC. He oh. wasn't in sixty minutes. No, but this, well, I have to believe that there were other things going. But on. Rose, you, Rose was on CBS, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I, I could imagine a scenario where Eliza Dushku went to Les Moonves to complain, and then <laughs> and, he and then he made closure. it worse. You know. Yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I recently heard that Andy exactly. Rooney, Andy Rooney was um, doing some nasty things to the girls there. Yeah, but he's dead. So, you know, <laughs> I, I, you can't dig him out of the grave and uh, and, and take away his I'm pension. Kidding. Andy Rooney didn't do anything. Well, I, I, I met Andy Rooney and he was not <laughs> hey, a nice guy. Charles Corral. No, remember yeah. Charles Corral on the road? Do you remember that? Yeah. 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 Well, it seems that while he was on the road, he had like three different wives. You know, he, he was oh, like, yeah, I read that. Yeah. So, you know, nobody's perfect. Yes, Jack. <laughs> well, see, we're living in a different time. Or maybe they are. We're, we're living at a different time. There was a time when you could buy somebody and they'd stay bought. You could you, know, you buy their silence. Yeah. And now, because of the intrusive nature of the 24-hour news cycle, and everybody wants some recognition. You can't buy somebody and be sure that they're going to stay bought. Yeah. I, by the way, I have another story here I want to mention That's quickly. Horrible. Quickly, because I always suspected this. Uh, anybody, everybody here see the movie Manhattan? Woody Allen. Yeah, Manhattan? I was going to mention yeah. that that article. Well, when I Woody when Allen's. I when I first saw that movie, I I had been going with. I'd been going with a woman who it turned out I did not know at the time. I thought she was older, who was 17. And so I had experienced a relationship with, say, a 17-year-old. Uh, and when I watched this movie, I said, Woody Allen's been fucking a 17, 16 or 17-year-old. I said, he had it all right, okay? And it turns out now that's exactly what was going on. Uh, her name was Christine Engelhart. She was a teenage yeah, model. She wrote that article. She was 16 years old at the time, and he wound up having an eight-year affair with her on and off, including threesomes with, with others, including threesomes with Mia Farrow. Uh, and I, so I said to myself when I read this, I knew it. I just knew it because he had all the nuances of of an older guy having to deal with a girl that young. 
and and also the certain amount of innocence that she had. Oh look, what, what is he showing? Okay. That's Dubai now. Uh, yeah, that's the opening of uh, of Manhattan that he's showing. Don't do that. I'm going to get sued. Uh, yes. <laughs> well, never be sure about uh, these teenage girls. Uh, I had an experience. Uh, I think it uh, it happened when my when my first wife was alive. I used to do these career day things at the Dallas Telecommunication Magnet School. And I did one, and this young girl came up to me and did everything but throw herself on me right then and there in the uh, high school TV studio. And if I had run into her on the street somewhere, I would have never guessed mm -hmm. That she was 16, 17 years old. Well, she, the, the, Christina Engelhardt says that the the Mariel Hemingway character, at least partially, was based on her, and that um, uh, she said she she was the one who who made the overture to him. He mm -hmm. met her somewhere at something or another, and she asked for his autograph, and he gave her his autograph, and then she wrote him and said, "You want mine." And, mm -hmm. and started coming mm -hmm. on to him, and they went on to have a, a, an affair for quite a while. So, And she doesn't say anything bad about him. She says uh, 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 he, that he, uh, you know, that she, she has no gripe against him. She's not saying this to get him in trouble. Okay. And let's not forget the same thing happens with women. Uh, uh, there is a former Texas politician, a woman. Mm-hmm who uh, had, she was 36, the guy that she was hanging out with when I knew her, and she wasn't in politics at that time, she was going with this kid who was 19 years old. So I once asked her, what do you and a 19-year-old find to talk about? And she said, Jack, yeah. a 19-year-old doesn't have to talk. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, she, he was 19. In this case, this yeah. girl was, uh, Engelhart was 16. I suspect that their affair started much earlier from just some indications that I got about yeah. the two of them. And, and I love that headline, by the way, there, uh, 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 of drug-filled uh, se sex with, uh, yeah, there it is. With, uh, with, with school a schoolgirl model. model. Uh, but it doesn't mention, you know, we just lost Jack. Uh, yeah, he probably has to go to work. He has to, has to go do his show, which is right after this mm. one. Uh, that's kind of a prejudicial statement because it doesn't ma mention that Mia Farrow was involved in these sexual trysts. Uh, but it's, it's, it's just a fascinating story because it's something I always suspected. Um, yeah. Having gone through I something. I read that article. It said that uh, she was at a restaurant and she passed her. She said... Uh, you, it seems like you have to always get asked for an autograph, so here's mine. Yeah. And she, she wrote down her uh, information. One yeah. thing before you close. Yeah. Ray, can you sing uh, if They Say It's Your Birthday by the Beatles for Alex? I'm in the gym. He's in the oh, gym. So? No. No. <laughs> All right. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'll get in trouble. I'm not even supposed no. to be on the phone. No. I'm going to start playing the theme song now. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Happy birthday, Alex. Yeah. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday, Alex. Nah, well, Happy you know. Happy birthday. Yeah. It was not Happy much birthday. of a birthday. It just it, it just came and went, you know. They say it's and, a birthday. Uh, you know, I suppose it would have been yeah. better if it were like on a weekend or something like that. Uh, well, it is over. Now you're officially... Yeah. Uh, uh, one year older because uh, it's past midnight. Uh, yeah, mute your yourself, town. Ray, because uh, we can hear the air conditioning uh, from that place. Anyway, uh, I'm trying. Hey, listen, Sorry. we we got to go uh, here. Uh, uh, Patrick, thank you so much. By the way, we won't be hearing from Brian for a while. He got work, and uh, he won't be able to come oh. on the show. So. Oh, he didn't yeah. get arrested. Alex, what's no. your schedule? What What's my schedule? What do you mean? We're doing shows this week, then we're off next week. We're okay. off till the second, yeah, of January. Uh, no, the second of July. We'll be off till second of July. <laughs> uh, thank you, Phil. Thank you, uh, uh, Kevin. 
uh, still a few more days before your little operation. And uh, thank you, of course, to Bree, who is uh, sitting there in Dubai. Lovely Dubai. Wave Dubai, Bree. Uh, goodbye, Rob Alfano. Goodbye to Ray. And goodbye to Matt Jeff Stein. Uh, let's have them all wave a big goodbye to you. I'll wave goodbye to them. And then, we, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Thanks for uh, wishing me, uh, you know, a happy, uh, happy birthday. Uh, wait a minute, I'm trying to get my picture on here. Hold on. Let me, yeah, well, I'm waving goodbye. Now you wave goodbye. There we go. Okay. Anyway, thanks to all of them. Uh, Rob Alfano, the whole, the whole gang. Just a, a great bunch of folks to hang out with. I'm Alex Bennett. Uh, uh, Jack Bishop is next with the, uh, with the intersection over most of this same station. Uh, and uh, uh, so, uh, and that will be followed by all of our shows repeating themselves over and over again till tomorrow night at 9.30, well, actually at 8.30 when the Franchise MC does the arena, our sports show on Wednesday. And then at 9.30, it's uh, The Exchange with Damian Chaplin. I'll be here again at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, Tell her I love her, okay? Bye-bye.